I'm Alex Pierce, and today we're going to be talking about AP Octane. And once you have AP Octane installed, uh, it's going to be on the In menu under the Octane tab under the In menu, where the Octane Camera Imager is. This is also where AP Octane is. With the setup tools, the first thing I'll say is you can read the the tool tips. If you hover over any of these, you give tool tips. So this obviously switches to render engine, render engine to Octane. So if this was in any other uh, render engine, then it will just basically go to the render tab and switch it to Octane. Basic setup, uh, if you click on this, it will give you an object. It will create an, a, a material for that object. Uh, it's a very, very simple material, but it's a material. It'll create three lights that Octane like, and it will create a camera. You have to have a camera in your scene. You have to have an object with the right material and you have to have lights in your scene for Octane to even render anything. So those are some things when you're first getting started, it can be frustrating. If you don't have any cameras in your scene, you don't know why it's not rendering, um, that's why. Uh, the next one is add day environment. So if you click on that, um, you go to world and you can see what it does here. It basically just creates a daylight, <coughs> uh, a daylight environment and then you can tweak this, you can move this around, you can change it to night, do whatever you wanna do. Uh, but it just very quickly adds a, a day environment. And again, if you're just getting started, this is really helpful. Uh, and even if you're not, like I still start with this and then I'll go to, to uh, sunset or whatever. Cam imager override. This turns on this button right up here and it, it, it uh, enables override. So I'll go ahead and click it. If you don't know what this is, basically you wanna do this. Um, there are reasons why you wouldn't, but if you're just getting started, definitely do that one. And then viewport denoiser, yeah, and you can see uh, some of these have a uh, cap level, very high, you know, you need to go to scene preview passes and check denoise beauty for this to work because there are some bugs with the way that Blender for Octane or Octane for Blender works. And uh, so anyway, if I click on viewport denoiser, I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see a little better. Um, right now there's no denoising happening in the viewport. If I click this, and again, it's gonna tell me, hey, you must enable denoise preview pass. I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, so I clicked it and you don't really see any changes. Um, that's because you have to go to uh, here. This is the scene and then under passes, under preview pass right here, click on this. And then you have all these different passes, but if you go to denoiser beauty, now let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and switch into here. Now it will denoise and we'll be able to see it. In fact, I'm gonna turn down my samples because that's one of the issues here. Preview samples will just say is 10. So that at, at the end of my uh, 10 samples, it will go ahead and denoise it. Um, so let me see. Yeah, so you see that how it just denoised everything, right? Adaptive sampling on, all that does is adaptive sampling on, it just turns this on. Denoise compositor, this is kind of an old way. I might, I need to update this to be honest, but uh, it basically just adds uh, the, the Blender default denoise um, to the compositor. And uh, you might want to do it a different way because you have this Octane denoiser. Setup color management, this is a very important, very important, especially again, if you're just getting started. There, This is basically the the setup that you need for to see Octane correctly. If this is set to standard and the exposure is wrong, and this is wrong, then what you see in the viewport and what you render can be different among other things. So what this setup color management does is it just makes sure that all of these settings are the uh, recommended settings as, as per the experts in the field. Um, so that's what that does. Path trace quick settings. So this, this uh, uh, good, a friend of mine, uh, he gave me these settings and I think they work great. If you click on that, it changes your kernel type to path trace, and then it changes a bunch of these settings so that it, it renders uh, a bit faster. And it kind of depends on what you're rendering, but uh, but in general, I found that it works really well. Okay, now everything else is basically only in the paid version of AP Octane. Um, <clears throat> so you have material tools. These, so convert to Octane material. This just runs the, the, um, the Octane command. It will convert a Blender material into a an Octane material. Open Octane DB. Again, this just opens the Octane DB. It's just a shortcut for it. That's all this is. Save mat to local DB. Same thing. It's just a shortcut to save your um, uh, your material to the local database. And the star here is must uh, must be Octane material and must have local DB path set. And then it tells you where to do it. 
and then cust add custom node groups. If you click on this, <clears throat> and then you go into material, the only node group I have so far is SEP R8 RGB. And so you get this extra node here. I just, I needed it for some project. Or no, I think I was helping a user who's doing this. And this is great because if you have a texture that, um, that uses, that has packed, uh, let's see, image texture, that has a packed RG and B channel, like I can't remember which one is which, I always mix them up, but if one is roughness, one is metal, etc., you can separate it into that. And then if you click on this and push tab, you can actually see what, what I did. So it's just an OSL, an open shader language script, and then one is red, one is is green, and one is blue. Uh, so that's what this, that's what that that button does. Object tools, let's see. So cam visibility on and off. This is a very handy one, uh, and this is also another buggy one with uh, just with the way Blender works. So let's say this we have this light here, right? We don't want to see this light. We just want the light to affect this object. So if you go to the object uh, panel down here and you go down, 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 you have this, this, uh, these check boxes here: camera visibility, shadow visibility, dirt visibility. Um, so if you turn those off, you can see it's it's gone, right? Well, that's what these that's what these settings do. But with one caveat, if I click on this cam visibility off, right? Have this light lamp selected, cam visibility off. You can see here it actually turned them off when I hovered over it, but it still shows up in the viewport. And if I render right now it will work. See, it's gone. So it does work. It just doesn't work in the viewport for whatever reason. Um, <clears throat> so there's, there used to be a workaround in the old version of, uh, of Octane. I could just push edit and then unedit and get out of edit mode, switch to edit and then object mode. And then it would appear that doesn't work anymore. So I don't, I don't know what's going on. If you need to see this removed, you can, again, you can just go down here and you can, check and uncheck one of these and it'll it'll work. So anyway, render layers sort of do the same thing. If you push render, if you look here, this is the render layer for this object. If I push render layer two, it'll switch it to two. One will switch, switch it back to one. One was supposed to switch it back to one. Oh, I have to have it selected. So render layer one, and then now it's render layer one. Okay, so let's talk about uh, HDR. So HDR tools, you have this background on and off. If you push off, it will turn it off. If you turn it on, it will turn it on. Uh, supposed to turn it on. I'm, I've been having some weird issues with, uh, uh, with Octane recently. There we go. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, set up HDR world and load HDRs. And the, the tooltip here tells you that you need to put them in, in C, HDRI. What this does, if I go to my world settings here, I'll pull this up a little bit. When I, when I push this, oh, I don't know what's going on with my background. Uh, Octane doesn't like me right now. Okay, set up HDRI world. This creates a new world and then sets up this, this, uh, this node group here. And it does a few different things here. It has, the, it has a setup for EV and it has a setup for Octane. So this is the Octane version. And one of the updates I've had is that I changed the image texture to be 32-bit, which I, I guess I didn't have before. And it's kind of interesting because now if you push Z, oops, Z, this is a Pi menu that I also created. So, so when you get AP Octane, you get this Pi menu, you can change the kernel types here. And then if you go down, you can go to EV. And this is kind of interesting because you can get the same um, uh, HDRI. And this is how some, this is how some users uh, use a, uh, AP Octane, they will set up their materials for both uh, for both Octane and Eevee and then you can switch between Octane and, and Eevee and get sort of the best of both worlds. You can get the real-time engine and the the path tracing engine and again you can use the, actually the exact same HDRI. Uh, there are some settings you would need to tweak uh, with a view because right now it's set to raw um, for Octane but uh, but yeah you have the same HDRI it loads in both of them and then once you've loaded these, then you can go to clear day or cloudy day, and you can choose one of these, and it will switch the HDRI to 9.HDR. And the reason why I named in this is so that you could use your own. If you want 25 of your own custom custom ones, uh, you could do that. You can change it to uh, to uh, to whatever you want. And then I've also added a custom user custom though. So if you say you wanted to keep these, which is what one of the users 
uh, told me about. So, you know, I, I like the ones you provided, but I also want to, to have my own. Well, now you can do that. You can, uh, you can go to the, ah, give me one second, go to user custom one, and then basically in your HDRI folder, user one, you can just name them 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then in user two, you can add your own and name them 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. And then you, it will, uh, you still have to, you have to make sure you load them before you can. So you have to do this button, uh, before you can load them in here. But once you do that, you can load whatever HDRIs you want. And again, you can, you can change them out. The only thing is you just need to rename them. So if you wanted to change, have your own studio, then you could just change this one. You could just make your own and put it here. Bake tools. This is a, this is an interesting, interesting one. Um, think where to start I'll start with texture size it's it's pretty obvious what it does it changes your resolution to um, 1024 by 1024 or 2k or 4k and then you have these these options down here these are the these are the main options and it, this is very this is very important you have to you have to select an object and not just select it whatever the active so if you have multiple selected whatever the active object is which in this case is a lamp that's what it's going to try to create the bake cam from. So you want to make sure that if you want to bake this monkey, you have to have this monkey selected and it's the active object. So when you cre press, uh, press create bake cam, it tells you here, you may need to refresh after pressing this button and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So you click on this and nothing happens, but if you push this refresh button, um, hopefully something will happen. Yeah, great. Something's happening. And behind the scenes, what it did was it created a camera. It took the name from the object and added that to the name of the camera. And then it also took the, the baking ID, whatever the highest baking ID that exists in your project. If you have 60 different objects and they're all different, uh, uh, baking IDs, then it will create one for 60. It'll create the, the next available number. So in this case, it would have been 61. In our case, we, we had one, so it, it created baking group ID two. It, it changed, so it changed the camera to a baking camera, first of all, changed the camera baking group ID to two. It changed the items group baking group ID to two. Um, and, and now, yeah, now you can sort of see what we're, what we're getting here. Um, and then again, so let me go back down. Where's my, uh, that's not what I want. Uh, AP Octane, let me go down here. So we've refreshed it and then bake and attach. And again, you need to make sure that this object is selected. Bake and attach basically takes the active camera. In this case, this Suzanne cam, this one here is the active camera as opposed to this one. And then it, it, it says, okay, this is the active camera. This is the active object. I'm going to bake the texture and then I'm going to going to attach it in a, uh, an EV material. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So this one's selected, this one's active. I'm going to go ahead and switch to solid and then I'm going to push, uh, bake and attach and I'm going to try my best to be patient. All right. So eventually it told me starting bake. Uh, so, and then if you're looking at the console, you get this message here. Uh, may take a while to go grab a coffee or beer if you need to cancel mid bake blah 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 so uh now if i go if i push zero um you'll wonder why the background is pink that's because we are in ev so i'm actually going to turn these off and I'm turn strength down now you get this so this may not look special but this is the baked lighting from our scene um so this object right now i have zero light in this in this scene. So I'll just give you an example here. I'm going to duplicate this, change the material. There we go. Okay, so <clears throat> so now this and I'll just show you real quick. So if we turn this up, you can see that the monkey that is not baked when we turn the light all the way off in our scene, obviously you don't see anything, but our baked monkey, even with zero lighting, looks like it's being lit from something. Um, so there's a bunch of different benefits for this. I don't want to go into too many of them. The main one I, for me would be for web. If you're going to web, this is helps you the performance like crazy. When you're baking, you have to consider the color and the setup. So you can use these standard and raw 
to change the way it looks and the way it bakes. And you can see down here, basically there are some reasons when you would want standard, and there's some reasons when you would want raw. And so these are just uh, options for you up here. UV one or two, if you have more than one UV, then what this does is it takes the active camera and if you go on here, it will, you can choose the uh, UV set. So if this object has two UVs and I wanna to bake to the second UV set, I can choose this one and it will change the UV set here. Change it back to one for now. And again, it might not show up in the viewport, but if you push render, it will. And then padding, what this does is it goes to the active camera and it adds to the size. So you can see this is three, by default it's one. If I change this to three, you'll see a little bit more of the results. So right there, if I could zoom in, I would. I don't think I can though, yeah. Anyway, it adds a little margin around the uh, around the the object. All right, and then lastly, let's talk about uh, the render tools here. So resolution is is just simply the, whatever your dimensions are, you, if you push half resolution, it'll just do this percentage by half and then full. I like to use this a lot when I'm just rendering quick stuff and I just wanna look at it. I'll use half res uh, to do that sometimes. Uh, max samples, so under the render tab, you have your max samples for rendering. Again, it's sort of a quick setting. You just go to 10 to render real quick, or 1,000 if you wanna render a ton. And then setup cryptomat is an interesting one. So this, what this does, it changes a bunch of settings. Um, let me see, if we come down here, so right now it's set up with PNG and, and you know sort of the default ones. If you set up CryptoMat, it will use Octane Output, which is important, and then it will do EXR 16-bit DWA lossy, and then uh, it also sets up the, it also enables passes. So it enables these uh, Crypto Instance ID and CryptoMat node, and maybe also this, this, this one may also be enabled by that. Uh, but basically, that would be under here, under Passes, <clears throat> Cryptomat. It checks these boxes, basically. And then Render Frame and Background is exactly what it sounds like. All it does is it renders it. <clears throat> it basically goes to the to Solid View for you, and then it renders it um, in the background. And if you want to see it, you just push F11 after it's done rendering. Okay, that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoy AP Octane and let me know if you have any questions, if you have any feature requests. I do like to try to figure out new workflows and, and I, I am trying to improve AP Octane uh, specifically for helping you get set up and go with something or automating a certain process. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.